good to see all the faces out there today. Just in keeping with what, uh, sorry we don't have our projection. Now that's missing. <laughs> <laughs> the mockers came with their mocking. Our projector came without its projecting. So we're going to have to do without it today. My brother Michael was, I can't remember where you said you were, Michael, when you uh, got handed this pamphlet. From a, somebody asked him if, if he knew Jesus and said, uh, Michael said, well, yes, I was just baptized. <laughs> and the person said, into what church? <laughs> and then handed him this pamphlet, which immediately told Michael that if he wasn't one of the chosen before he was baptized, it didn't do any good anyway. Oh, what a disappointment. Yeah, I want to I want to read you something here and I want to base what I talk about on this because there are some extremes in teaching out there. This says the scriptures are in direct contradiction. Now, listen to this. The scriptures are in direct contradiction to any teaching which may say that man has a free will in his own salvation. Why are we here? Why are we here? What could the point possibly be if everything's already decided? And you can't do anything for your own salvation. It won't do any good because God's already picked them. And if you're not among those elected before the foundation of the world, you have no opportunity. And I asked Mel to say, and I, I, I think I'm going to just chuck everything I was talking about and use the songs that we sang today as, as my outline because the, the thoughts in it express exactly what I want to talk about. But I want you to think about this. What scriptures teach about whether you and I have a choice or not? Do we have the right to say yes or no? Now I, I understand the scriptures to teach that we are the most powerful of all of God's creation. That is in this physical world. Because you and I have the right, the ability, the power to say no to God. The birds don't do that. They can't. They're instinctively in, embedded with information and they follow that information. They don't have a choice. You ever heard of a salmon that says, nope, I'm not swimming upstream. Not me. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. They go upstream when they're supposed to go upstream to the very spot they're supposed to go to and they lay their eggs. And they die trying if they can't get there. Everything is under God's control except you. You... God wants to voluntarily give your control to Him. That's the point in everything. I want us to go back, go back to the Old Testament. I want to go back to the book of Joshua. Because you, you know the story of them coming out of Egypt. Uh, uh, they weren't out of Egypt but just a very short time and they, they looked around couldn't find Moses. He was gone for more than Ten minutes and, and they decide they're going to make a calf. And his brother Aaron is the idiot that leads them in this. They make this golden calf and they bow down and worship it. Now that, folks, was a choice. It's a choice they made. It's a choice that God gave them. 
wait for me. No, we're not going to wait for you. Over and over again, throughout that 40 years they were in the wilderness, they did those kind of things. They had a choice and they chose to disobey God rather than obey Him. Right here, Joshua's getting he, He's been faithful this whole time. Yeah. He's one of two out of 12. Two out of 12 that decided that he wanted to follow God. Joshua and Caleb were the only two that came back and said, sure, we can take this land. God said we can. We can take this land. The rest of them said, man, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. We can't do that. It was a choice. It was a choice. Ten chose no. Two chose yes. Are you telling me that Joshua and Caleb were predestined to choose that? That God made the others choose no? In Joshua chapter 24, he's getting ready to pack it in. Joshua's old, he's tired. He's getting ready to go the way of all men. In verse 14, he's talking to the people for the last time. He says, Now therefore fear the Lord, verse 14 of chapter 24. Fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Does that sound like a choice? Does that sound like they could go back to that other if they wanted to? Or they could choose to follow God? He's saying do this, not that. It's a choice. He says... If it is disagreeable, if you disagree, if it's disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. Will the gods of your fathers that they served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A choice. A choice that Joshua made that he wanted the rest of them to make. A choice. We can do what we want to do. The question is, do we want to do what God wants us to do? Is that the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Well, my first thought is, <laughs> since when? But that's the way they're feeling right now. Right now they're thinking, I, I think we better choose to serve the Lord. <coughs> For the Lord our God is He who brought us out and our fathers up out of Egypt from the house of bondage and who did these great signs in our sight and preserved us all the way uh, in which we went among the peoples through whom, whose midst we have passed. The Lord drove out from before us all the peoples, even the Amorites who lived in the land. We will serve the Lord, for He is our God. Amen. And you know, from this time right here, we go into what is called the period of the judges. 350 years. 350 years of up and down and up and down. Faithful and unfaithful. Faithful and unfaithful. Fifteen different judges they had. Seven complete cycles of disobedience and punishment and then redemption and then falling away again. Seven complete cycles. <coughs> they had choices. They had choices that changed from generation to generation because sometimes it's not passed on to the next group. Sometimes we don't deem it important enough to give it to our children. It's what we were talking about in class this morning. That gird your loins with truth. If you want to pass this to the next generation, then deal truthfully with your children. 
with your offspring because they can see hypocrisy from a mile away. It's so important that we understand what Jesus said. Sanctify them in truth. Thy word is truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It doesn't matter which generation. The truth is what makes us free. Now, I, I, really, I really don't understand what the point is in people having a religion where they're already saved or they're already damned. It doesn't make a bit of sense to me. Why would you preach if it makes no difference? Why would you change if it makes no difference? What is the point to tell somebody what they need to do if doing it makes no difference? That doesn't make a bit of sense. You notice, uh, I want to get the numbers of those songs that we sang. Would you give me the first one that you the, I, I'm talking about the ones that Mel had. Okay, good. Give me the first one. Okay. Yeah, just give me one. Uh, 552. 552. Let's turn back to them. Because I want to look. I want to show what we do on a regular basis. What we talk about on a regular basis that has to do with what I'm discussing right here. 552, is it? Yep. Have thine own way, Lord. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 5, Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Anybody know? Give me another word for gentle right there. What? 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 Meek. Meek. I've always hated that word for, you know why? Okay. Tell me, tell me what the word, what rhymes with meek that usually is used to describe it? Weak. And it's exactly opposite of what Jesus was saying. The Lord said, blessed are the meek. That's what most translations had up until just a few years ago. Blessed are the gentle. If you think that's weak, if you think that's weak, I want you to tell me how gentle is weak with a barrel racing horse or a cutting horse or an ox that's trained to the plow where that animal under the control of even a child can accomplish feats that are a hundred, a thousand times the power of the child because the power of the animal is in the hands of the child. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that had, had this little girl. She, she was so little. And she had this great big quarter horse that she rode. And I'm telling you, it was so much fun to watch her because her, her feet didn't even reach the stirrups. But she'd be up on that horse's back and just... A hint from that child as to which way she wanted to go and that horse was gone. A hint. Just a hint at where she wanted him to take all that muscle and he would go that direction. That's gentle. That's all that immense power under control. That's what gentle means. So what Jesus is saying is blessed are you human beings who have all of that power that I gave you and you give it back to me. Have thine own way, Lord. Please, Lord, do with me what you want me to do. Let me be your instrument. You know how hard it is to turn your decisions over to somebody else? Are you a control freak? <laughs> if you are, it's going to be harder for you to make the decision to turn things over to the Lord. Have your way, Lord. But stop and think about Him. In the garden, understanding what He was about to face. Lord, if there's any way, please let this cup pass from me. But... Not my will, but your will be done. 
how hard it is to turn our power over to somebody else. But that's, that's the decision that we have to make. That's the choice that we have to make. <clears throat> have thine own way, Lord. Thou art the potter and I am the clay. There's a statement about Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. When Nebuchadnezzar finally, finally recognized that it was God that ruled, he made a speech, sent out a decree. And in that decree, he made the statement, who can say to God, what have you done? Or who can ward off God's hand? Who has the power to do that? Well, you know, we all can for a while. We can say those things. We can do those things. But understanding the consequences of not subjecting ourselves to the will of God to not understanding that God has the supreme power and that God will exercise that supreme power at some time. Recognizing all of that and being willing to subject ourselves to His will is what all of these songs are about. Have thine own way, Lord. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now as in thy presence. Humbly. I bow. Have thine own way, Lord. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. You know, that's a voluntary thing on our part, though. To let God have the last word is a choice that we make to let God decide. It says, fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me? Is that what you want? Because it has to be what you want. Not because you have to. It can't, because you, can't be because you have a fear of going to hell. That will never make you or me the kind of person we ought to be. 1 John tells us that. Perfect love does not, or uh, fear does not perfect anybody. It has to be love. We have to do it because we want to do it, because we choose to do it. We are citizens of this kingdom because we want to be in this kingdom. It's not something where we're born there, whether we want it or not. We are citizens of this kingdom if we choose to immigrate to this kingdom. If we choose to be translated into this kingdom. What's the next song? 674. 674. I have decided. <laughs> Isn't it funny how these songs teach what we're talking about? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Have you ever met anybody that decides to do something for five minutes? <laughs> and then, then it's decide to do something else. And then it's decide to do something else. Deciding to follow Jesus with no turning back? That takes some, that takes some will. And it takes some won't, too. It takes will and it takes won't. I won't turn back. I will follow Jesus. The world behind me, the cross before me. When we leave that world, Paul talks a lot about stay where you've attained. Don't slide back into what was. Hold on to what you got. If you make progress, dig in, stay there. Don't, don't fall back into what you were.
Peter describes that as a dog returning to its vomit. <laughs> uh, that's a nasty thought. And a sow returning to her wallowing in the mire. Well, now that one I can understand a lot better because every time I wash my boys up and they had two minutes before church, they found a mud puddle somewhere. <laughs> Seems to be our nature to do that kind of thing. But when you put it in terms of that dog, and a, uh, that's a horrible thought. But that's kind of what we do. When we go back into something that we wanted so badly to get out of, that we wanted clean from, when we're, we're out of it and we're headed in a good direction, to go back into that, it's just crazy. He says, though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back. No turning back. <coughs> will you decide now? Tell me something. Decide. Will you decide? Is that a choice? Is that a choice that we make? Every day, we're faced with choices. If we don't have free will, why, why the choices? If we don't have anything to do with it, why does he tell us to do this and not do that? It doesn't make any difference if we don't have a choice. What's our next song? 822. Huh? 822. 822. <laughs> oh, this is my song. My song. <coughs> My stubborn will. I did not have a good relationship with my father. My earthly father. And I bear most of the blame for that. Because I disappointed him so many times. He didn't have the ability to forgive me after that. I'm just glad that I outlived my stubbornness. My stubborn will at last has yielded. I would be thine and thine alone. And this the prayer my lips are bringing. Lord, let in me thy will be done. Let me, let me make up for the past. It says, I'm tired of sin, foot sore and weary. The darksome path hath dreary grown. You ever had a tough path? <laughs> and you're tired of walking it? Tired of going down that road? But now a light has risen to cheer me. I find in thee my star, my son. Thy precious will O oh, conquering Savior, doth now embrace and encompass me, all discords hushed, my peace a river, my soul a prison bird set free. When Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. But there's a caveat to that. The truth will only make us free if we accept and turn. That's the only way the truth has any bearing on anything. That's right. That's the only reason that we are told the truth is so that we can have a choice. What was our next song? Page 22. Uh, 698. 698. Yep, 698. Oh, my Jesus, as thou wilt. I am so impressed with one thought that just keeps coming back to me as I read the New Testament. That is that Jesus over and over again made the statement, I do nothing on my own initiative. 
I do what I'm told. He said of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does nothing, says nothing on His own initiative, but whatever He's told. That's what He says. Jesus then, at the very end of His life, just before He ascends into heaven, He says to His apostles, all authority has been given to me now in heaven and on earth. Here's what I'm telling you. You go out and make disciples of all the nations. Disciple means follower. You go out there and talk people into following you because you're following me. Then he says, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And if you do that, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. Go out and give people a choice. Tell them the truth so that they can make a sensible choice. And when you give them all of the information, sanctify them in truth. Psalms 119, 160 says the sum of your word is truth. That's not one verse. You, you can, I can show you verses on this thing. Verses that, I don't, I don't know how they picked them for what they're using, but they, they've got a verse here. A verse that says something, but the doctrine they're getting from it is not truth. Sanctify them in truth. Thy word is truth. Not just one or two words or verses. The whole of God's word is truth. Amen. Put it all together. Soak it all together. And the stew that you get with God's word is the truth. With the nuances, the flavors from here and there, from everywhere, all of it steeped together is the truth. Now, you know, as we, as we go out here in this world, I want us to be gentle with people. I talked earlier about having that spiritual sword and whacking off spiritual heads. And I'm so, I, I, I'm so wish I hadn't done things the way I did them early on. But by the same token, we have to correct stuff like this. This is wrong. This is wrong because it leads people to believe that you, if you are not a, on the list already, you're wasting your time. And I don't believe that because the passage that Jake read, God is not wanting any to perish. And the reason He's waiting is so that everyone can have every last little bit of chance in order to change. And when God's convinced that there's no more chances, no more effort in that direction, He'll be done. We'll be done. The world will be done. But right now, you and I have a tremendous opportunity. That is to reach out there and save people with the truth of the gospel. The truth that you have a choice. I have a choice. We all can choose to say no to the most powerful being in the universe for a while. But do you really want to do that? No. So if you're subject this morning to the gospel call, I would, I would suggest to you that we use this song, My Jesus, As Thou Wilt. Oh, may thy will be mine. Into thy hands of love I would... All, uh, my all, resign. Everything that's me, I would resign. Through sorrow and through joy, conduct me as thine own and help me still to say, my Lord, thy will be done. <clears throat> Won't you come while we stand and sing this song? <clears throat> Thank you.